Hello, everybody. Coach Miriam here. Happy Friday. And if it's not feeling happy, let this video encourage you, sis. OK, because, you know, what? you are more than a conqueror. But many times we're dealing with the defeated mindset. And as long as your mindset is defeated, it's hard to see how you can win. Right. Because you're looking at what um, is, is happening around you and seeing and looking are two different things. Seeing requires faith, even the ability to see yourself from God's standpoint. And many times it is our mindsets that are inhibiting us from the places that God wants to take us and where he wants to take you is a place that is prosperous, which doesn't mean that you're not going to go through trials and tribulations, but it's meant um, for the trials and tribulations to actually uh, help develop you, not damage you. OK, and when the enemy wants to um, destroy us, he deceives us um, and you know, I've been in this field of mental health for quite some time, for about 10 years, y'all. I'm telling my age a little bit. <laughs> um, and I, you know, I have a private practice, um, but I, in this group, I am uh, coming to you as a coach. And I'm passionate about helping people change their mindsets, because when you can change your mindset, you can change your life. I mean, even the children of Israel. The children of Israel were delivered from Egypt, but thousands of them missed out on their miracle because of their mindset. Come on. So he can take you out of Egypt. Right. But you need deliverance in your mind in order to get you to the promised land. Right. You need a change in your mindset in order to get to your miracle or whatever that looks like for you. But, you know, according to Jeremiah 29, 11, let me tell you that he knows the plans that he has for you, plans to prosper you, not harm you, plans for hope and a future. But until you know who you are in him, then or until you know your purpose, all right, and your purpose and is found in him. Who you are is found in him, meaning Jesus Christ. Come on, I'm not just going to say God, but Jesus Christ. Um, then you're going to be operating from a place of limitation because you don't truly know who you are. But who you truly are is amazing. Who you truly are is more than a conqueror. So it's allowing yourself to really come into agreement with that. Um, if not, then we are setting ourselves up for a limitation. We're setting ourselves up to be deceived. Uh, we're setting ourselves up um, to be misused uh, or to misuse others, to abuse ourselves, to abuse others, uh, things like that. Okay. So I'm going to bring um, a scripture because I call this video uh, Mental Mayhem. And it's not meant for you to live in chaos and confusion because God is a God of order. And um, I believe it's 2 Timothy 1 and 7 that says he's not giving you a spirit of fear, but a power, love and a sound mind. So many of us are lacking in the knowledge of who we are because we're so used to, um, you know, what we've experienced. We're so used to uh, looking at our circumstances um, but we don't have sight into um, who we are spiritually. And that also takes faith. And it's the entrance of his word that also brings light. So if you're experiencing darkness, if you feel like you are in obscurity, this is the perfect time. It is the time, the time to work on your relationship with God. It is the time to apply his word and begin to know who you are spiritually and whose you are. Look, you belong to Jesus Christ. We belong to him. You know, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth. But I have to develop that relationship and that partnership with him. And he wants to walk with us. He wants to commune with us. He wants you know, to put his super on our natural so we can truly walk in the a power and the authority and have a conqueror's mindset instead of a mindset where we are, we're only seeing ourselves as conquered because we, we see ourselves failing. 
Come on. Somebody say, I need my sight to change because you're using faith. Uh, but faith can work in two ways, in a positive way or, an, or a negative way. If I have a, a certain belief that I'm going to fail or that I can't make it or, you know, uh, it, it only has to be this way or I'm going to be defeated. That is also faith. That is also faith. So it's not necessarily a faith problem. It's just believing the wrong thing, because as long as you believe it, it will seem true. Because I need somebody to catch to catch what I'm saying. OK, <laughs> coach is saying catch it. Somebody say I, I catch it. I catch it. So, you know, I, I just want to take you through a three step process. And, you know, before I go into that, let me also say that. Um, as long as you're holding on uh, to the pain, imagine like having a tight grip onto something. As long as you're holding on to pain, it is it's not to just be dismissive of the pain. It's not to invalidate it. I have experienced a lot of pain. I've experienced uh, sexual abuse, emotional abuse. I've experienced pain. OK, and it created problems and it it tainted my perspective of myself that even when God was trying to place me in, in certain areas, I, my perspective suggested that I wasn't worthy of it or I wasn't deserving of it. According to God's perspective, once we accept him into um, into our hearts, into our lives, it is necessary for us to begin renewing our minds so we're not getting in the way of of, of where he's trying to take us. Your mindset and your perspective can actually inhibit you from the places that he wants to position you. Okay. So as long as I'm holding on to my pain, um, then my hands are not even available for help. Somebody say, I'm going to release this pain so I can allow myself to get the help I need. So if you need help, don't hesitate to reach out. Sometimes they're like, well, we're even, um, thinking, oh, well, it's not a big deal or, you know, it could be worse. Yeah, it could be worse. And it definitely focusing, being, you know, um, appreciative and uh, using gratitude is also cathartic. It's a way to keep your perspective, um, you know, in the right place. However, if you're not really moving um, like you are made to move, come on, <laughs> Um, tomorrow's not promised and it's not to, to even provoke fear about tomorrow, but it's to suggest that, look, there is so much inside of you that you need to give birth to. You're made to make an impact. But as long as pain is taking up capacity within you, then you're not available for your father's business that you need to give birth to. Okay. So here's a three step process and um, stopping the negative thoughts or the limiting beliefs. There's a rule. Well, number one is uh, start thinking about what you're thinking about. Become aware of what you are thinking about. OK, because sometimes we're we <clears throat> the thoughts are um, we've become so used to those thoughts or, you know, habitual thinking, habitual thinking that it's like, you know, we're so, somewhat desensitized to it. We may think that it's normal. We've normalized lies. Come on, we've normalized certain ways of thinking. We've acquiesced to, well, maybe this is just how it is. This is just the way I am. No, it's not. No, it's not. You are the change that you want to see. So your transformation begins with you and then everything else begins to transform. So number one is start thinking about what you're thinking about. Number two Come on, now we got to apply the word of God and connect it. Number two is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. And it says, cast down wicked or cast down imaginations. Cast down imaginations because you are imagining things. Whatever you meditate on is what you become. You're already meditating. You're, you're using a faith um, by, by your imagination. It, it, it is a form of faith. So cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Y'all catch that. Cast it down means if look, if a mosquito comes to suck your blood, come on, it's taking life from you. you know, if a mosquito um, uh, it, it starts biting you and, you know, sucking your blood on your arm, what are you going to do with it? You are going to hit that thing up like, ah! 
oh, you know, I hit that thing so fast. Look, I won't waste any time. But sometimes we, you know, we just let these thoughts come in and just do a little dance and, you know, cook in the kitchen. Come on. We start imagining this scenario and that scenario and, and this and that. And we just let the little thought just move in and just squat, you know, hold on. But this is your house. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. What you're going to do with a squatter, you know, somebody that just comes in your house that doesn't belong. You're going to kick them out. So you have to treat um, your mind that same way, because if if you don't, it can then um, seep into your heart. And once that happens, what you're at first is the belief part. Then the belief begins to affect the behaviors. And it says the, the scriptures tells us guard your heart because out of it comes the issues of life. So then it can create a heart issue. Come on. But there is a remedy. There's a remedy is to cast it down once come on, I start thinking about what I'm thinking about. Now I'm going to cast down. Um, a negative thought or a limiting belief that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And the knowledge of God is what? Is God, God's word. If it, if this, ne this negative thought doesn't align with who God says I am, I am going to cast it down. All right. If I have this belief Oh, say I, there's an opportunity for you or there's um, there's this idea that you want to start a business, but you start to think about failure and, you know, you don't know if you can do it. That is a negative thought. That is a limiting belief. So I'm going to for one, I'm going to become aware of it. OK, now I'm aware I'm going to cast it down. I will say I cast you down. I cast you down because according to God's word. So come on. So cast it down. That's number that's number two. And let me just read the rest of the verse. It says, and bring uh, every thought into captivity. Bring every thought to obedience of Jesus Christ. So that means I'm going to um, even decree. I uh, bring my thoughts obedient to Jesus Christ. OK, but how what does that look like? Here's the third step. So not only am I going to cast the thought down. I need to bring it obedient to Jesus Christ. So now I'm going to um, replace it. And I'm going to decree a new thought. So that new thought might look like a scripture. Well, you know what? I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I'm going to make it personal. Miriam can do all things through Christ, which gives me strength. Yes, maybe I haven't done it before but I'm going to do it now because I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That is breaking limitations off of yourself. Come on. There are generational patterns of limitation. When you start to even look at your life, look at your, your parents' life and maybe even think about their parents' life and you might start to see some similarities, but let me tell you, you're meant to be the generational breaker and changer. Come on, you don't want your children or even your grandchildren going going through the same things that you are going through. You're meant to change the, the trajectory. And in order to change the trajectory, it really starts with your own transformation. It starts with you changing your mindset. So I pray that makes sense. It's the three-step process, right? Start thinking about what you're thinking about. Come on, bring every thought captive to Jesus Christ, right? You cast it down bring every thought um, obedient to Jesus, right? That means I'm going to apply his word because and he, he knows me. Come on, you take the car to the manufacturer, you know, so it can get fixed. So he knows you. I'm going to bring myself um, to him because you're a child of a king. So in order to see yourself as royal, you have to then uh, come into agreement with his word and allow his word to then come into your heart. Because you are a peculiar treasure to him. That's what his word says, right? Find a scripture that literally um, deals with the, the negative thought that you're dealing with. Find a scripture that is in, that will conquer the negative thought that you're dealing with. And that is what you end up replacing with. That's step three. Okay? 
All right. So let me know what part of this video blessed you. OK, invite a sister to this group. If this video blessed you or if it's been a blessing thus far, take care, everybody. I love you. Jesus loves you more. Bye.